typical installation of a Federal Pacific dry type transformer. This video is general in nature and is not intended for specific application purposes, nor is it intended as a training video for unqualified personnel. It is intended to show a typical Federal Pacific dry type transformer and the basic procedures for installation. Different Federal Pacific dry type transformers and transformers from other manufacturers may require different installation procedures. Please read and understand the installation instructions manual packed inside the Federal Pacific transformer before and during installation. The personnel installing a dry type transformer must be trained, qualified, experienced, and as required, licensed to perform this installation. All personnel must understand and follow all national, state, and local electrical codes and have and use all appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE. Cables shown in this video may or may not be appropriately sized for your application and the proper size and type of cables must be determined before attempting the installation. All potential power sources that will be connected to this transformer must be properly disconnected locked out and tagged before starting any installation procedures. This includes both the primary and secondary sides of the transformer as power can potentially be backfed into the transformer from the secondary side. Federal Pacific and its affiliates are not responsible and disclaim any liabilities and or damages arising from your use of this video. The safe and dependable operation of a dry type transformer is dependent on proper handling, installation, and maintenance. Dry type transformers are for indoor use unless the enclosure is specifically designed for weatherproof service. Installations should be made in an area reasonably free from dust, moisture, chemical, and corrosive vapors or fumes, and where there is adequate ventilation for cooling. The transformer arrives bolted to a shipping pallet. The bolts can be removed and the transformer set off of the pallet. Once off of the pallet, the transformer can be moved into position with a forklift or pallet jack. If the transformer is equipped with lifting eyes, those may be used. The transformer should be located in an area where it can be inspected at any time and the wiring compartment should be accessible at all times. All electrical codes concerning space around electrical equipment must be followed when locating the transformer. Adequate ventilation is essential for proper cooling. Single-phase transformers rated up to 25 kVA and three-phase transformers rated up to 51 kVA should be located a minimum of four inches from walls or other obstructions to allow the free circulation of air. Single-phase units rated above 25 kVA and three-phase units rated above 51 kVA require the minimum spacing to be increased to 6 inches. Refer to the nameplate for each Federal Pacific Transformer to verify the required minimum spacing. The ambient air temperature should not exceed an average of 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit over a 24-hour period and not exceed a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Average ambient air temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, will result in the derating of the transformer's rated load capability. Once the transformer is located, it must be secured to the floor. The bottom flanges on the transformer have holes for bolts. With a marker, mark the position of the bolt holes on the floor and slide the transformer over enough to access the marks. When mounting on concrete floors, drill and anchor the transformer with anchor bolts. For other floor types, use an appropriate anchor for the type of material in the floor. Warning! Before removing any covers from the transformer, all potential power sources that will be connected to this transformer must be properly disconnected, locked out, and tagged. This includes both the primary and secondary sides of the transformer, as power can potentially be backfed into the transformer from the secondary side. The nameplate on the front of the transformer lists the model number, along with technical information about the transformer, such as KVA, primary and secondary voltages, 
jumper connection information, and also displays a connection diagram for the transformer. You must verify that this transformer is specified correctly for your particular application. First, remove the front cover from the transformer and set it aside. The cable entry area is the lower compartment of the enclosure. Cables should be routed such that they remain below the label marked Keep Cables Below This Line and not come in direct contact with any transformer coil surface. Packed inside the transformer is the instruction manual and stocked warehouse Federal Pacific transformers from 15 kVA to 75 kVA. 150 degrees Celsius only include a lug kit. Additional lugs that would be attached to the grounding stud shown in this video must be purchased separately. Please refer to the instruction manual cable lug section for transformers not shipped with lugs. Transformer terminal connections are bare aluminum, tin-plated aluminum, or copper. The front-facing surfaces of the terminals come from the factory clean and prepared for connection. Bare aluminum terminals are treated with an electrical joint compound to prevent oxidation. If a connection is required on the back side of a terminal, care must be taken to properly clean the terminal surface as necessary. Do not abrade or scratch brush clean-plated connections, as this will remove the plating. Torque values for lugs can be found in the instruction manual included with the transformer. Next, install the cable lugs. When installing lugs on the transformer, refer to the lug section of the instruction manual. Aluminum mechanical lugs must be marked AL9CU and rated at 90 degrees Celsius. To install the lug, always use two wrenches when tightening or loosening bolted connections to avoid damage or distortion to the terminal. This illustration shows the proper sequence of the lugs, bolts, flat washers, lock washers, and nuts. Do not install washers between the lug and the terminal. This will cause heating and arcing, resulting in failure of the connector. After assembling the lug and fasteners, as shown in the illustration, Use two wrenches to tighten the bolts to the torque values shown in the tables in the instruction manual. At this time, install the lugs for all of the primary and secondary cables, and if appropriate, for the neutral. At this time, you may wish to verify your primary voltage source to determine if the tap jumpers will need to be changed to accommodate primary voltages that are higher or lower than nominal 100% voltage. This transformer has the jumpers set at nominal voltage at the factory. The nameplate on the unit shows the tap layout and also gives you a chart to let you know what taps will provide the desired voltage depending on your primary voltage. Changing the taps is accomplished by reconnecting the tap jumpers per the transformer nameplate. Tap connections should be cleaned in a similar manner as described earlier before making an electrical connection. Loop out taps as shown here will also require insulation paper to be removed in addition to varnish resin. First, apply electrical grease to the connection. The tap jumpers should be changed one at a time to avoid confusion, and the connection hardware must remain in the same orientation. Always use two wrenches to loosen or tighten the tap jumper connections, and for loop-out taps, apply enough torque to flatten the lock washer plus approximately one quarter of a turn. After the tap jumpers have been changed, if necessary, you must now cut or drill entrance holes for the conduits where the primary, secondary, and ground conductors will enter the transformer enclosure. You must place all leads to the same load or from the supply source through one knockout so that no part of the transformer case is positioned between such leads. With the appropriate size drill or hole punch, locate an area below the indicator mark inside the enclosure and drill or punch the first hole. Larger holes may require more than one punch to achieve the desired size. Drill and punch the second hole in a similar manner. A smaller ground wire hole can be punched in the side or bottom as necessary. Once the holes are drilled and punched, wipe out any metal particles that may have been generated during the drilling and punching. Place the conduit's box's threaded end through the hole and tighten the nut. Repeat for the second conduit box. Plastic caps can be placed on the conduit fittings as required. Warning! 
because connection requirement may vary for each application, the conductors used and the connection configuration shown in this video may not be appropriate for what would be required for your particular situation. This video is only intended to show basic procedures used to install the transformer, but you must adhere to all electrical codes in effect and all specific requirements for your particular application. Connect all appropriate ground wires to the grounding stud and to the neutral exo-terminal connection. After stripping the end of the wire, apply an electrical joint compound to the bare ends of the wire. After connecting the ground wires, pull the first set of cables through the appropriate conduit box and into the transformer. Pull enough of all three leads into the enclosure to allow connection to the H1, H2, and H3 primary lugs and for the wires to loop down below the label on the inside of the enclosure that marks where leads should be kept below that line. After installing the first set of conductors for the primary, pull the secondary set through the second conduit box and repeat the installation process using the X1, X2, and X3 terminals. Continue to use electrical joint compound on the bare wires when inserting them into the lugs. In this connection example, a fourth wire, marked with white tape, is pulled and connected to the XO, or neutral terminal for equipment grounding. Your installation may have two secondary wires connected to the XO, neutral terminal, or it may not use this connection at all. Once all the leads are connected, recheck all of the connections to verify that they are tight and that all of the conductors are routed down into the bottom of the enclosure and that none are touching any of the coils. Next, loosen the four bolts on the vibration isolators by turning them one turn for proper vibration isolation. Finally, replace the front cover by tilting it to one side, sliding the front panel notches into the enclosure sides, and then fully into position. Replace all the bolts and tighten. At this time, you may wish to verify the secondary voltage from the transformer before closing the disconnect to the connected equipment. To do this, verify that the disconnect from the secondary to the equipment is open. Close the primary disconnect to energize the transformer. At the secondary disconnect, read the voltages on all three phases. Reading phase to phase and or phase to neutral is preferred, as reading phase to ground can result in erroneous readings. Note that after initial energization, dry type transformers may emit odors for the first 24 to 72 hours as the varnish fully cures. This is normal and the odor should dissipate relatively quickly.